Hi hey guys, MJ the GM here. Now, you're probably wondering why the episode A isn't starting yet, and uh, B, why the number of the part of the episode is different than what you expect. So, um, unfortunately, when it came to um, streaming and recording part two of this episode, Six Impossible Things, um, my PC suffered a hard crash, which um, unfortunately corrupted the video file of the uh, the stream, which is unfortunate. Uh, I did try a number of times to um, see if I could rescue the file, but all for naught, I'm afraid. So unfortunately, as a result of that, um, we are jumping into part three rather than part two of uh, Six Impossible Things. And as a result of that, just so you guys know what's actually going on, I'm going to do this uh, quick summary here. So the dealio for this, um, this part, part three, was that they've already achieved a, a number of things. So I'm going to try and summarize exactly what they managed to get up to in part two so that it's a bit more obvious why they are proceeding from where they are proceeding here in part three. So let's get on with it. Uh, after having repaired as much as they possibly could the damage that was done to the Navis, they were now leaping into how to move around the Tilikal's realm and trying to retrieve their erstwhile crew member, Lieutenant Turin. In order to do that, they actually came up with a rather ingenious method of using probes as like stepping stones. The deal being, they know that the reason Turin phased out is because that her uh, resonance was different from the bubble that they were currently occupying on the Navis. So they created these like waypoints that they could use so that when their runabout traveled to the waypoint, it subtly shifted the resonance of the runabout so that it matched that of Turin's when they got to her. With the deal being then that when they beamed Turin aboard, they could then translate her back to the resonance of the Navis and she could stay permanently, which they did. They did successfully. Um, as an aside, and a sort of a behind the scenes look at what goes on. Um, there is this deal with the Tilikal's realm in that um, even though the electromagnetic radiation there is harmful, especially to biological entities, it allows one to be able to bring about the end result of the task you are looking to achieve if you focus on it. So behind the scenes, I was looking to up the difficulty of all the tasks they were doing in order to achieve an end, in order to represent the fact that they had neural inhibitors on. These inhibitors were helping protect their brains from the harmful effects of the electromagnetic radiation, but conversely, was also getting in the way of them actually using the realm's ability to realize the result they were aiming for. So I had that factored in and... Um, Turns out I really didn't need to, because these guys started rolling like champions hereafter. They were achieving four successes, five successes, six successes. And so in the background, I just shrugged and went, okay. <laughs> so um, that's the way it goes down, I suppose. They successfully got Turin back. They then started looking for the Tilikal themselves, and they did find them, specifically the leader, de facto leader of the, uh, the Tilikal, which was uh, Ashtamalia. And they got in contact with Ashtamalia to try and ask about, you know, what the hell's going on. So Ashtamalia transports the primary characters to like a, uh, an illusion almost, or a recollection that the Tilikal have of how their society looked before they got imprisoned. And apparently that is the deal. Um, they are known as the displaced because they have been imprisoned in this place. In this place. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> and um, the Tilikal who put them there were apparently sick. 
and they uh, imprisoned Ashtamalia and those who tried to help them in this weird realm, uh, imprisoning just their spirits, not their physical forms. So as a result, um, they've asked the Navis for assistance with finding their physical bodies and using the Tilakal technology still active out there in the galaxy to bring them back to their bodies. They're going to need an assessor, a creature known as an assessor, in order to operate the Tilikal technology. And the crew quite rightly pointed out that the last time they met an assessor, Assessor Tredic, uh, Tredic said that um, it wasn't time. So the, uh, the crew were wondering if there was a way that they could persuade an assessor that it was time and they were able to bring them back. So a Tilikal by the name of Turlanumian volunteered to join with one of the crew so that he could leave the realm with them and could then speak for the Tilikal and allow the assessor to do the job. And this is where things got really interesting because the, 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 the guys, they got split into two camps. There was the one camp that definitely wanted to help the Tilikal and agree to this, but there was also the camp who didn't completely trust the Tilikal's motives and therefore weren't really hot on the idea of getting possessed by an entity they didn't know um, didn't know all that much about and didn't trust their motives and didn't therefore want to risk the security of Starfleet and the Federation. And that's pretty much where part two ended. Um, even after my PC fell over, they were still debating the finer points of this predicament, which is great stuff. And that's pretty much where we find ourselves at the beginning of this part, part three. They are still more or less having the end part of their discussion and are starting to come to conclusions now. And that will become obvious uh, when we start because we do have a quick summation. So yeah, that's what happened. Um, it was a shame that we lost part two and whenever I look at the list of videos now my, my OCD is going to make me twitch more than a little bit because I can see the gap but never mind these things happen it's an unfortunate uh, unfortunate thing but there we are I get around the fact that uh, it happened and the video got corrupted hopefully it won't happen again in the meantime I will put you now back onto the start of the episode you were actually tuning in to watch thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoy the video Stand by. Hello again, folks, and welcome to the rather, well, <laughs> rather impromptu uh, session we're running today in order to finally conclude what happened last week, because I suffered a system crash, and therefore these guys and yourselves were all deprived of an actual episode ending, so that's why we are gathered here today. With me, as ever, are the crew of the Navis. We are going to forge ahead under the uh, the hope that um, no such technical errors plague us again, and that we will be diving into the this episode in order to see how we break the navis out of where they were. So, as a quick quick summary as to where we left it off. 
Uh, at least in regards to everybody watching the stream, uh, these guys did continue the conversation past the system crash, so we'll have to recap that briefly, but I'll let the guys um, let you in on how far they got. <laughs> But, um, yes, the Navis accepted uh, a plea for help from uh, the Tilical, and the Navis was drawn into another subspace realm, whereupon the ship was uh, rocked about a bit, suffered quite a bit of damage, and uh, folks started having hallucinations from the electromagnetic radiation that goes on in this realm. They also made contact with an old lost crew member in Lieutenant Turin, as well as the Tilikal apparently trapped in this uh, subspace realm. So uh, with everything else, they've determined that this realm functions kind of weirdly in that um, the success of any venture is based as much on the trust and belief that it will work, the focus on the fact that you will achieve the results you're aiming for as much as the actual attempt to um, get endeavors to work. As such, they managed to use that to find Lieutenant Turin, and they also used that similar method in order to locate Ashtamalia, the female, uh, apparently female, um, leader, or at least de facto head of the Tilikal. The Tilikal stated that they had been placed in this realm with just their ju just their mind spirits, their, what they call their Adarai, because apparently the Tilikal are able to separate their minds from their uh, from their physical bodies, which remain in the regular uh, part of the material universe. But uh, there were some apparently sick, ailing. Mm -hmm. Tilikal, who, uh, for reasons of probably that very same sickness, um, incarcerated the, Tilika, the other Tilikal who were trying to help them in this realm. And they've been trying to find a way of getting out ever since. Those means of trying to ask for help have also resulted in them reaching out to any minds that they felt would be receptive. Hey, suitable substrate! Welcome back! We missed you. Um, so, uh, yeah, the Tilikal tried reaching out uh, to mines in the regular universe, and apparently when they made contact with other mines, they uh, drove them slightly batty in the process of doing so. And the only way they found that they could influence people to help them was to start using this projection, however they managed it, to subtly influence people's minds um, in order to steer them in the direction of trying to find Tilikal technology to help them escape this realm. So, yes, we finally have more of a handle on what's been going on with the, uh, the, the uh, Tilikal technology that the Navis and her crew have been coming across in the Shackleton Expanse. But now, of course, we're faced with an interesting little dilemma. So let's take us over to where the crew last found themselves, which was inside of the Tilikal's um, space within this domain, where they had created uh, a facsimile, almost, a, a recreation of their homeland. But the Tilikal themselves are still very um, spectral, very incorporeal still with some of them having suffered as a result of being incarcerated in this place. So it's kind of a race against time for the Tilikal displaced, as they call themselves, that um, as much as the, the crew of the Navis have got a countdown for how long they can um, endure this electromagnetic radiation in this realm before it becomes harmful, the Tilikal themselves, even in their energetic forms, are also on a countdown to how long they can survive. So. I believe at last blush we were looking at a debate amongst the crew because a member of the Tilikal had suggested that he merge with one of the crew in order that he can go out into the material universe with them 
and can be an aid of sorts to uh, any time they come across telecloud technology in the future. Now, unfortunately, the uh, stream uh, cut out because of my system crash when this debate started getting really interesting. These guys uh, carried on the discussion after I was um, busy trying to repair what would happen. So um, for the sake of myself, as well as everybody else, we are going to now switch the ambience from the intro summary type of music and go back to the land of the Tilikals. So where did you guys get to in your debate about what you were going to do? Tie. Yeah, go on, Alex. It was a tie. It was a tie. <laughs> we're, we're actually discussing the, like I said, this isn't a democracy. The captain is in charge unless there's extenuating mm -hmm. circumstances rendering her unfit for uh, to issue those commands. Well, let's go back to why there was a tie. What was what was the arguments both for and against? Like somebody on the for side. What was the the overall feeling on those who were very much for this merging? Um, I think no one's probably one of the biggest voices on the for yeah. side. It's obviously spent a lot of time reaching out to these people following their technology uh, they've specifically asked for help and offered us a way to do that and we're Starfleet that's what we're supposed to do Which um, is plus it's a great opportunity for learning more about them and their technology which we've not had the access to before this is literally first hand experience yeah very very point um very spot on. Very good point. Um, Mike, what's all eyes think on uh, think? <laughs> Him do think stuff. Fuck. Only one think stuff. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. What's uh, what's all eyes thoughts on this then? Since he seems to be on uh, the, I mean, the side of Nova. Nova. He, he's put no on this. Uh, we've made this much effort. We've gone through all these different obstacles and. Uh, damage to the ship uh, to, to pursue this and this needs to be resolved and if the merger resolves the issue so much the better uh, you guys figuring Lieutenant Turin would say yes is very sensible uh, no. I, I would agree no, we, we, we veto, uh, I vetoed Turin's vote because she's NPC okay also so potentially influenced yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So, Davis, what was Vibers' take on all of this then? Uh, Vibers was sat in the middle ground for quite a bit on this debate and ended up reasoning in the four direction because a member of a joined species, a pony opposing someone else doing a joining who it temporary and both sides are willing that okay. sounds a bit hypocritical to say no okay <laughs> so da so uh, vibers is saying yes based on cultural grounds uh nova and or are both saying yes uh on um basically explorers grounds <laughs> very interesting so let's go to the other side the one i find very interesting saying no to this is edwards Alex, explain uh, explain Edwards' thinking on this then, please. Effectively, given all this, the dangerous things we've come across, and that it's is a very is a reluctant no, but it's the whole. We're only getting ultimately one side. As much as it'd be a great opportunity to learn, to experience that kind of thing, we don't know if the people of the, these Tilakal are. Actually, as they say, or are they the sick ones that were locked away? It's, yeah. it's releasing something that could be damaging to the, the universe if we're wrong. How many cultures could be affected, could be destroyed? How many lives could be lost if this becomes something horrible? 
we're on the precipice. We can't afford to take chances. As Very much as he wants to preserve their technology, his culture, there's everything else. There's been time and time again in history where those who have been less technology advanced have been taken in and exploited by those who are more advanced. Earth history is riddled with it. So it's one of that kind of things, as much as it would be great to learn and do it, it's a very big risk. And he, 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 he's not playing God. As much as it pains him to try and walk away from something that would great to preserve stuff that, but the risk to everything else is too much for him to take that chance. The things they've taken and things before, there's not been really any massive repercussions. Uh, to like onto the same scale as this so it's it's just he can't take that chance morally interesting so Yan what's Cabal Fazanan's uh, view on all of this um, it's, it's similar to uh, similar to Edwards but added on to that is um, the fact that they the Tidical can basically take over somebody's mind. So it is, if they are not good faith actors, it would be very difficult to... There would be no way for us to guarantee, have a guaranteed way of knowing if the Tidical is not slowly but surely corrupting somebody or taking somebody over. Additionally to that is this realm they're in has been existing for a long time. So while we might think we're under extreme time pressure to solve this issue, that's not necessarily the case because time flows differently here than it does to the outside world. Very good point. So we would be very rash to sort of just <clears throat> charge into this. Interesting. Now, I've already got a good idea of where Andrew sits on this, but let's hear Webby tell it for himself um, yeah I think exactly what and what um, Edwards and Fazland have already said but it's also that underlying she's experienced being manipulated yeah. and puppeted so it's that underlying reservation of I know what it's like to be influenced and I had no control over it and I have this underlying level of paranoia of, is it ever going to happen again? And I can't afford to also put the my crew and the Federation at risk. Because as was Edward said, is that we don't have all the information. We're only hearing one side of the story. Intriguing. And so the one I really want to hear how, where he falls on this is Dr. Bertram. Gareth. Someone mentioned Lost. <laughs> <laughs> Where well, um, does Dr. Bertram fall in all of this? Because I, I note that he's standing very firmly in the middle yeah. at the moment. Bertram was completely torn. As a doctor, he wanted to go with him to try and help these people who are apparently in need. As a Starfleet officer, he accepted the... Um, it was a potentially unfeasible security risk to have a high ranking officer um, influenced by an unknown quantity of such power. Um, I was actually, funnily enough, I was actually looking at his values and I found even the values at all. It's like, um, first for knowledge says, do it, do it, do it. And think of the long term says, no, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> um, ultimately, I think he would end up siding on the no side after a lot of internal strife for two reasons. Uh, first of all, his first duty is to the care of the crew, and this would potentially um, introduce something that could be harmful to the crew that there's no guarantee they could fix. And secondly, he's already uh, the colony that he grew up on. It was founded by a a student of history as well as science who always um, pushed the primary almost like the internal colony prime directive if I could use that phrase is um, science is the greatest tool of the Federation but it always it must always serve the Federation it must not serve um, science itself or 
um, personal drive or ambition, which he ultimately feels that going for this um, possession would lean more towards personal ambition than the greater, uh, greater, greater good. purpose of the Federation. <laughs> yeah, I was trying not to say a greater good because <laughs> I just knew I'd immediately do that. <laughs> So I think, while well, he'd be torn on it, I think ultimately he would go along with the no group. All right. So it seems that, uh, well, the, the, the fact that you've got odd, an odd number <laughs> has, has worked in, in your favor. It gives you the ability to cast votes and there shouldn't be a tie, so. All right. Well, so it Andrews, seems. Andrews is also was... I, mean, I have been kind of contemplating on all of this, and yeah, I would, uh, Andrews would state to them that she values the opinion of all of her officers, but on this decision she's making the executive decision, and the reasoning behind it is we cannot fully trust the information. Okay. Because we do, we have too many unknown variables, too much at stake at this moment in time, and I cannot put my crew federation at risk. Fair enough. Now, um, if you guys are having a conference to one side of the uh, the, the, the Tilikar whilst they're uh, letting you discuss this amongst yourselves, Turin will note that even if you lose essentially the, the possibility of melding with uh, Atilical's consciousness, these guys have made um, effort to contacting people on the other side. So there's Turin reckons there's a high likelihood that even if this uh, this Tilical who offered to join with one of your crew, Turlo Numian, uh, even if he's not physically there, it should it can potentially still be possible to find a way of communicating. Since Turin does point out that you do have te Tilikar technology on board the Navis itself. So maybe it might be possible to set up a form of communication to this realm using the Tilikar's own technology. So maybe contact doesn't have to be totally lost, but it can, in that regard, maybe be done on your own terms. If that's seems like a feasible option. Kind of like, um, essentially Turin is offering a compromise between two, both parties. But that's entirely for you guys to yay or nay. But it seems, democratically speaking, that we have reached a decision. So, I suppose the next question comes down to, um, are the yay voters all right with the fact that there are more nay voters and are willing to let this this decision go? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I had a feeling. Point, yeah. Uh, Nova had already suggested that um, she was willing to resign over this matter, so I think she'd probably put that forward again. Um, and whether it's not resignation or just the uh, transference. Should put, put her a question, isn't she? So, Re regardless no, of whether that means she can merge with the guy or not, she should be re looking at resigning. Okay. Ooh doop, ooh doop, doop. That's the sound of Matt's mental gears whirring. Apparently they go oo doop 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 <laughs> Make some noise. Uh, Makes it. Basically, it's just the, the pure conflict um, coming from command of the crew against her values. Mm. Um, you know, she, she prefers honesty and mm. wants to help orphans and that sort of empathetic link with people. Um, so she doesn't see mind linking with everyone to be an issue because essentially the crew is always in her head. Yeah, and so this so makes what's, sense what's one more along for the ride? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, doop, doop, doop. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, this is much more when Lieutenant Turin jumps in because she herself is a telepath. Um, Turin will suggest to everybody that there's a possibility of something that she could suggest. It's not going to be... It's, it's not going to be without risk. But it's something she's heard of before in Vulcan history. And it exists as a possibility if it's something that could potentially bridge this impasse between both parties. Turin recalls how Ambassador Sarek had created such a strong catrol mind bond, essentially. Well, I say catrol is more spirit than anything else, but hey, Vulcan mysticism. Um, <laughs> Sarek, had, uh, who's ambassador to Earth, of course, um, had created such a strong bond to his adopted daughter that distance wasn't always an issue with being able to communicate. It put a hell of a strain on the one who was trying to send a message, of course, but Turin suggests that potentially if she acts as a bridge between Turlanumian and Nova, she could perhaps link the Katras together so that even though Turlanumian would still be here, there would still be a way of either party contacting each other. It wouldn't be easy, because you're existing across different dimensional boundaries, but it exists as a possibility that she could link the Katra. But of course, she does look at the captain if this is... whether or not this is acceptable. So, I think it still sounds like it's linking a member of the crew which she doesn't want to do. But at that point, it, it comes across as if it's okay for Turin to do, why isn't it okay for somebody else to do? Yeah, so I suppose what I'm trying to get at here is that rather than Turtle Numian just being able to flip a switch and say, Hi guys, it's me now, I'm in charge. <laughs> You'll forgive me while I talk with Nova's voice. Um, the effort required to actually communicate across dimensions uh, will mitigate, potentially, the ability of one party to influence the other. Therefore, act as almost like a security buffer, if you will. As if the captain will not accept it. Because there is still that risk of being pocketed, and she cannot to have any of her senior crew compromised. Okay. And she will put her foot down and say, this is an order. You can, disre uh, you can disregard my order, but it is an order. Okay. No, oh, that's not Turn on Umian. <laughs> Where'd he go? Turlo, where are you? There you are. <laughs> So, Turlanumian graciously steps backwards, he, he throws his arms, well, the, the apparition of his arms wide and just bows and retreats to, um, to, uh, Ashtamalia's side. It was only a suggestion. You have, it seems, managed to, even with your primitive minds managed to access our machinery before. I'm sure you'll be able to do it again. And he just raises his eyebrow at this. Holds his tongue. In which case, Ashtamalia points, uh, butts in at this uh, juncture. At the very least, you appear to have accepted our plea for help. For which, we thank you. But I suppose 
your next pressing matter is being able to leave our prison dimension. In this, I am afraid we have some unfortunately bad news. The circumstances that arose in the system that you designate Candidate 3 were unique. Many variables had to converge to allow me and the rest of the displaced concentrating together to breach the barrier of this pocket universe and draw you in. That is why so many of us have been asking questions about your starship's technology. I am unable to reverse the process and send you home. I am afraid you must find your own way. With that, there is a brief flash, and you find yourselves back on the bridge. Yeah, that, that last bit just makes me even more sure we've made the right choice, because if they're willing to pull mm -hmm. us into a prison dimension without knowing that they can put us back, what does it say about them? Yeah, it did seem a little that they were definitely perturbed at the fact that we resisted. They almost would think this was the way they spoke to us and left us here, vaguely petty. The conversation's over in relation to this, the main thing now is getting out of here. Okie dokie. Commander, assemble a crew, see what we can do. Do we believe we have enough um, capability to gen regenerate the dark matter Taurus you built previously? Ooh, the Dark Matter Taurus. I can check what we still got on board. Um, a lot of the equipment for that was taken off in the nacelle replacement. Um, Webby, is, is Webby coming through as quiet for everybody else? Little. Mm -hmm. Any yeah, little. Little. Hang on, give me a second. Thank you. Give me a second, brother. <laughs> that yeah. That's much better. Oh, yeah. better. We want to hear weird your when voice, my dude. Yeah. yeah, when I swap my headset from my work laptop to my personal computer, is that, yeah, the headset just goes, yeah. <laughs> down now. So, Commander, assemble a team, put the best ideas together, and what you would suggest is the best way to and an escape from this reality. And this basically comes down to what the crew want to do now. So the advantage you have if you are using the Dark Matter Taurus that you utilized um, for in order to uh, reach into the mycelial realm is that you made darn sure that your then coach, well, your, your subordinate chief of engineering uh, had a very firm grasp of dark matter safety systems thereafter. So the good news is that if you are revitalizing the dark matter Taurus, then um, your chief engineer uh, does have a focus in dark matter safety systems. So what happened okay, before shouldn't happen again. Uh, the difficulty here being, of course, that uh, the Bravos were all incapacitated, but, um, of course, Ori was since brought back to, uh, to, to cogency consciousness uh, after being um, brought around by uh, both medical and percussive means. So, um, it should be possible to bring the Bravo brothers around as well. Um, Captain? You're not going to like this plan for helping bring them around. Hmm. We need you to give a speech. Okay. Go on, Commander. And we need you to make the whole ship believe with all their heart that the dock has already succeeded. Don't we have and to keep a focus on that? But in order to make the effects permanent, we have to constantly focus, though, don't we? We only need to get them conscious. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Vibers is implying. Yeah. Mm. 
No, 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 I got that. I was hoping that the moment we don't, that the cause or effect of no longer focusing on the one will then cause the other to go back to its initial state. Only one way to find out. <clears throat> so, I suppose then the first issue is to bring the Bravos around, or at least one of them. I think we need to bring them all because they'll probably cause a lot of distress for one to be able to be present and not sense the rest. Well, I don't think we need to be that... Is that Natik was able with, under Bertram's tutelage, able to get Ori stable. Hmm. Oh, they're just thinking more the psychological effect of always having the presence of the siblings and then... Yes, but this only is why I one. don't think we need to put as much effort in as possible. It's just oh, that's what you meant, sorry. Doctor. We know how to medically bring them out of the coma and it is the case that they need the... Uh, I can't remember what we did with Ori. Basically up, sedated like... his empathic sense. Yeah. Um, but that's different for a Delton than it is for a Betazoid, so, um, I mean, let's not forget that, um, Nova's been essentially gritting her teeth through this entire, um, entire endeavour, and just been kept keeping focused on what's ahead of her in order to stay conscious, so, you know. Nova could probably help. Whether or not the whole Bravo issue is amplified because they are telepaths rather than empaths, or whether because, as has been pointed out, they're used to being five of them, which means five linked telepathic minds are all receiving the same overload of input, <coughs> makes a difference. Well, considerations, perhaps. Nevertheless, what is it that you want to do? At the very least, it's, you know, it would be advisable to at least have your uh, chief engineer, who has got the requ requisite focus for trying to um, create dark matter generating machinery safely. We do still have the manual. You do still have the manual. No, that, Sean? we do. I used it. Matt got burnt. <laughs> it got burnt. <laughs> Actually, didn't it fly out the uh, the, the the shuttle bay <laughs> when the Taurus came loose the first time? <laughs> it was on deck three, unfortunately, and it went out the side of the ship. Ah, that sounds about right. <laughs> We've uh, lost the manual. Uh, <clears throat> so, again, I ask, what would you like to do? Revive the one, revive the lot, revive none of them and carry on regardless. We need, or, the, we need the safety protocols. Revive them all. Ready. So, this is probably going to be something that Nova's going to need to help. Uh, Doc Bertram with because um, basically Nova's gonna have to be there as a as a fellow Betazoid to basically say you're not going crazy your telepathic senses have been dulled just for the moment it's okay so in that regard we're going to require Bertram to give us a control and medicine um, this is probably going to be more biology or gen biology than anything else for Bertram. <laughs> Whereas Nova can assist with a well, probably an insight and uh, an insight and command jobby, utilizing empathetic projection focus. <laughs> Two successes from Doc Bertram. And a further success gives you one over what I thought you needed. So you managed to bring the Bravos around. So as you can imagine, they're all very groggy from the fact that, you, that Bertram has to essentially sedate uh, a part of their brain. So they do all wake up with a bit of a headache. 
but um, they immediately have that kind of wide-eyed dawn, dawning of realization moment where, well, hang on, hang on, I can't hear anything, or oh, it's all like muffled. But thanks to Nova being present, uh, does put them at ease. We've dulled your senses just for now in order to help get over this little hump. Okay. So you've now got the five Bravos available. And, um, of course, the, your security chief is now interested in um, being brought up to speed on the situation with the ship so that he can make sure that um, security are keeping people away from damaged areas, and making sure that the uh, engineering crews can still work without other folks getting in the way. And also to help show people the safest way to get past the, uh, the damaged decks. So, I suppose the next question becomes, what are you going to do to get out of this realm? What's the plan? If there's a plan. Maybe it's time to formulate a plan. What do we think? Currently, is the get dark matter engine working? Question mark, question mark, profit. <laughs> so what's that? The 67th rule of acquisition? <laughs> Create dark matter, question mark, question mark, profit. I thought it was, if in doubt, let the Wookiee win. It's Maybe a, a different rules of acquisition, <laughs> different rules of acquisition there, but okay. On a serious note, I, I, without knowing exactly how we're planning on using this to get out, I do have a horrible feeling we're going to have to have a, at least a one point during it, an entire crew mind over matter effect. Uh, moment to try and punch through. Because. And then anyway, I could think of to strengthen that would be to temporarily connect everyone to think in one direction. Which Jeez. means everybody's going to have to take the neural inhibitors off. I hey. think what, what we could do is just <clears throat> try something like having a, um, a scheduled announcement over the intercom. Um, I don't know, once every 10 minutes or something, directing the crew all to think of the same thing, just, I guess, to get the crew to start working together in a sense, thinking of one specific thing. You mean like a butlin, the announcer? <laughs> Wakey <you> wake up! <laughs> wakey wakey, rise and shine. We don't talk about the buttoning camps. That was a dark part of human history. <laughs> to him, all is well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, sounds like the beginnings of a plan. So you've used the dark matter torus to create and and the the itinerant um, technology to create breaches in the subspace before. So there's at least that going for you, but now comes the whole um, having to find out how to switch it from sending you into the mycelial realm, which works in a an interestingly different way of, or unless of course you are trying to access the mycelial realm in order to get you out of here. What happens if we? Oh, what's that... slipstreaming? A uh, slipstreaming is yeah, that a potential? Was it using? Than... Oh, sorry. No, that was it. Yeah, I, th I, th I think me and uh, I think me and the commander might be on the same idea. Using basically one space to, as it like a go between, so they jump from here space, uh, see your space, reality, normal space, that kind of thinking, like fold one to the other. What do other people think? Um, the bit I wanted to point out was a black hole was one of the con one of the conditions that made it easy to get here. If that was the case in one direction, I don't know a way to create a black hole here. But we do have the equipment to create a white one. I was going to say, are there any Romulan ships that got sucked in with us? 
Well, technically it wasn't a singularity that coughed forth um, the planet Orgun 3 to smash into the Candidate 3 system, so... Um, um, mm. It wasn't necessarily a black hole, it was more, it was more like a, a, some kind of wormhole effect that had displaced a planet and from one system and thrown it into the one you were currently in. But, um, a white hole is the opposite end of, is a hypothetical end of um, something like a black hole, so it's spewing time and matter back into where you're at rather than so I suppose it's possible to ride, go through a breach like that. You're just going to be fighting against gravitational forces, light and time, and all that stuff coming out of such an aperture. No, I was wondering if I could use such an aperture as a wave to carry us out of this place. Interesting. Effect, but my plan does involve blowing up this entire dimension. Um, and, and you put that okay. in there at the end. <laughs> As a side note, uh, this dimension may actually be destroyed. <laughs> but since we're trying to get everybody out this dimension, is that a problem? <laughs> I, I feel that you don't normally break people out of a prison by blowing up the prison. You don't? <laughs> well, Technically, they're, all they're in free, it. but yeah, okay. <laughs> <coughs> when I said I wanted to free... free. Sorry, buddy. Those that survived it all free, technically. And the vibers is logic. They were, no, we are not blowing And no one is imprisoned inside there anymore. No, we are not blowing up this pocket dimension. As much as I have my doubts about where this is going, I... Lovely crowds of genocide. <laughs> I also don't like this now, the more I think about it. This is, you know, because we're, we're generating ideas. Them, we're potentially showing them how to get out. A uh, good point. But we, we sort of have a different, I don't know what you want to call it, frequency. Maybe. True. Okay, so what are we thinking? Try and use something like a white hole creating an aperture that you might want to ride out and use the momentum of it carrying you out and whilst it's doing that try and shift the ship's resonance in some fashion so that it phases back out into another dimension yeah, one thing to... yeah. well <clears throat> one, we're thinking of a, a um, sort of a uh, creating a lot of energy to punch us out isn't there a way to make the make us anathema to this dimension and the dimension will then just expel us on its own well it was them that expelled the last lot yes than, but that was the telecal the telecal force the yeah dimension exactly. itself is actually what cabal said potentially <clears throat> okay if we were in theory, is the main computer quantum locked to um, subspace relays? Because if it is, we have a harmonic resonance with the natural frequency of our realm. I would agree. That kind of thing's probably on file anyway. Because, you know, so, yeah, the federations come across um, that kind of thing often enough. If we. we yeah. Don't need a harmon. We don't need that for that. Go on. Right. Um, we know when things are out of phase with the transporter. We've encountered this before. It's something Starfleet's hit a few times. Um, which means our standard reference transporter patterns are in sync with our own own, own, own dimension. We know what they should look like. I need to send someone through the transporter, hopefully... Well, we need to send something through the transporter and then someone. Just firstly to make sure they still work in this world. But then we'd know what the difference is. And that would give us a harmonic waveform that we can then... 
reverse to, in theory, start to desynchronize ourselves from this realm. Interesting. Mm, it at least knows, tells if we're getting closer or further away, if nothing else. This sounds... Don't we need... Don't we need... Do Transporter, have... Chief. It's not out cold, yeah. I was thinking more in terms of a target for the transportation. Well, we could just transport from transporter in one to transporter in one. Yeah. You wouldn't need to target unless we actually, unless we potentially try and transport the entire ship back through itself. Interesting. Mr. Vibers, take the Heisenberg compensators out. I was going to say. <laughs> We're going to break them. <laughs> I'm sorry, in Captain. Theory, <laughs> That's could. one of the things we're not allowed to remove. In, in, in theory, though, you could invert a transporter coil. So rather than a inward-facing beam, it is an outward-facing beam. So you would then transport the outward-facing structure onto the inward-facing plane. That have to be a very big plane. Um, the problem with this plan is... The transporter that's doing this can't be it itself being transported. It? I know that's just a little plan. <laughs> little plan, little problem. <laughs> Sounds like advanced perception. All these wonderful terms being thrown back and forth. I feel so smart just listening to these guys. <laughs> No, it's mostly just techno babble. I know. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah um, I think, Captain, you've got a, a good plan with it from one transportation to another because that will probably allow us to get an idea of how transportation is affected in this realm. We can use that as a spot point, maybe, too. If we can transport coverage. from the runabout to the ship, then we've got a We've got a button, a second system getting a reading at the same time. Mm -hmm. it, That'll so probably give us the best be option. Worth, it may be worthwhile as well we use a shuttle in an outer area and also use transporter because then we will potentially begin triangulating waveform variations. Right, that'll, that'll help us triangulate a course out of here. We need a way to... Right, then we'll need to try and get... Hmm. I think... Alright, if we get the... Uh, if we can get something equivalent to Dark Matter flywheel and engine running again, do you think you can get it so it can be tuned? As All in, right. you can pick a direction for it. Or I rec would probably reckon that as long as he's got data to assist with the calculations, then, um, uh, yeah. I know that or I, or at least Mike, doesn't know anything about this dark matter, uh, Taurus, uh... Right. <laughs> or Alright's very interested in the sound of it, actually. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, exactly brought up to date, but absolutely. In its most basic form, um if I get it right, from what I remember, it was a way of basically turning the, or tuning the Navis's energy signature so that it was compatible with the mycelial realm. So it altered the uh, the quantum state of the, or the quantum resonance, I should say, of, of the entire ship, allowing it to enter into the mycelial realm and then exit again. But of course, there's a lot of th things that needed to be done, like uh, a certain um, spin factor had to be put on the ship as well in order to make it able to um, penetrate into the mycelial realm. And so there was a whole thing of creating the uh, the, the, the flywheel and the torus together. <laughs> okay. In order to try and create that necessary spin, which would facilitate um, the, uh, the, the the transformation of the resonance. Vibus has a slight ulterior motive in asking the person who isn't qualified but can be really confident about this project to take the lead on that one. Yeah. Sorry, not isn't qualified but hasn't done this before, doesn't know what is and isn't possible for the system we're talking about. 
Yeah, therefore has no preconceptions about it, and therefore won't, won't subconsciously or unconsciously affect the outcome. Yep, and if he's told it's completely possible, it might exactly. be. Yeah, yeah, I'm liking it so far. So if this is the plan we're going with, it sounds like the first thing we're going to need to do is set up the transporters on the on the Navis and the shuttle and the runabout in order to create this triangulated pattern. Uh, a certain setup for the sensors is going to need to be done to in order to gather the, uh, the requisite resonance data to try and find what quantum resonance your home plane is going to be on. And there's also going to need to be something to, dis to, to, to find out what the resonance of this realm is so that you can find an antithetical resonance to it. That's just what I think. Does that sound reasonable to you guys? I mean, wouldn't our ship being constructed in our home plane already have a resonance of our home plane? Good point. Um, possibly. The reason we were avoiding using the ship is it travels, and it travels through subspace. Good right. point. So, would we pick up other things or not? Right. Like Very good stuck point. On the side of a ship, no problem. Because technically, the warp engines are called warp engines because they warp the boundaries between normal space and subspace in order to reduce the mass of the ship. So, very good point. So, or I wasn't wrong. So, no, Mike and or I no. weren't wrong. It's just that there was a very correct observation there made by a Davis Struck Vibers. So. What you need is definitive data, and then it's going to be down to setting up this actual endeavor. So it sounds to me like we're going to need a couple of uh, task roles to set up the initial, and once we're done with those task roles, we get to the actual extended task of this whole endeavor. Unless there's anything else anybody else wants to add to this whole thing, it sounds like you've got a plan. Who was the last person to beam aboard before we left? Mm. Good question. Mm. It'd been probably some random person of the crew. Um, what happened in the Candidate 3 system was that an away team was taken to a shuttle in order to have that shuttle land on the Bellerophon, so nobody really used the transporter. Yeah, so we could say it was anyone, one of the last mm -hmm. few people that was back on the ship. As I mean, would, the, um, wouldn't we have we beamed across to the Bellerophon to get to the shuttle? No, because the shuttle was on board the Navis, the Navis, it was the Navis' shuttle. If I remember, there were quite vigorous gravitational disturbances going on, so you didn't want to take the chance that um, anybody beaming over would get lost. Mm -hmm. Before that, or uh, beamed aboard. There's that. I said before all that, or I'd be in the board. Yeah. I agree. So you have something to go with. But ultimately, it sounds like you want to invert the transporter or some such. Or use yeah, the transporter all, as a means yeah. of trying to first turn the all, thing into energy. First of all, let's not send the person. No, but. but send, like. Mr. Monoko is sort of like chicken soup or something first. <laughs> Not the chicken soup! Um... I think... Oh, logical. Do you want me to try and come up with something? The bottle of green might work. Actually, Moss might actually be a good thing, a good, uh... Organic substitute. Medium. You mean the Moss has found a use? What do you mean? found to use. I've found multiple uses for this stuff. <laughs> well, what I'm to the rescue. Is sort of one of the experiments, uh, experimental plant moss based template plants is mm -hmm. designed to be compatible with a multitude of different biological systems. Yeah. Suggest one of those. Yeah. Yeah. It, it lacked yeah, as an interesting bridge between both. 
Yep, I'll suggest that to the captain. Anyway, sounds I think. Like we've got our t yeah, sounds like we've got our test medium then. Alright! So, we wanted what? To beam a sample between the Navis, the runabout, a shuttle, and back again, or just into, spa into the space in between them? I wasn't oh, quite... uh, beaming in between them. Right. So we need to, we need to detect any any variance in resonance. So, just for my own sake, are you transporting this sample from the Navis to the runabout, and then from the runabout to the shuttle, and then back again? Or are you just beaming it into the void and then? Yeah, put it round it the circle a few yeah. times. We said basically like yeah. Like the Large Hadron Collider, we're just sending it between all of them. So, the Navis to the runabout, the runabout to the shuttle, the shuttle to the Navis, etc. Just so we can see if there's any pattern degradations or variance of pattern. Okay. Well, in that case, we are going to need... Um, I don't think we're going to need any pilot checks, because that's a fairly simple job. You don't need the, uh, the shuttle and, and or the runabout to be all that distant from the actual ship itself. So, whoever wants to volunteer for piloting uh, either the, uh, the Carpathia and um, the shuttle, shuttle number one, can do so. <laughs> or I throw his hands up and goes, not it! Alright. He is not Yeah, let Lenny go. He can have Lenny go. Take one. Okay. Oh, Lenny. Lenny's more than happy, he gets to fly something for a change. Waiting in the wings. Oh, and um, do we want just random crew member number 64 to be the uh, the shuttle pilot? Or... Yeah. Okay. We don't even need to effectively launch the shuttle, we just transport it to the shuttle within the hangar. But then I think it would be more beneficial to have it in space, because then it's passing through the medium more. Yeah. Now, bearing in mind there's going to be some interference from the electromagnetic eddies going on within this uh, realm. My chance to overshadow Thazanan? Uh, sorry, Lenny. We've tried that before. <laughs> He's still the understudy. <laughs> Although, he's yeah. like one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, I mean, that's yeah. That's, that's no test worthy of a pilot just to zip it out of distance. The next point is, of course, to transport this and compensate for the electromagnetic interference that's going to be going on. Plus, the fact that because you've got neural inhibitors on, it is going to make. Um, thinking a little bit difficult so the actual uh, actual blah, blah, actioning of this stuff is uh, going to be a little tweensy bit more difficult than usual so we'll see how we go so um, with your chief transport officer out of commission who wants to take over as the uh, transporter operator What skills does that use? Well, um, obviously it will use the focus of um, transporter technology if you've got transporter operation, but not many people have that, but it's just going to be a control and engineering check anyway. I think this would actually fit Nova's skills. I was going to suggest. was going to suggest Nova, since this would be up her alley, as it were. Nova, we've got an impossible job and we really need you. Would you like to do it? <laughs> Cheer assist. Assist. Okay. Well, we've got any number of other folks who can attempt the job. I mean, there's Stevens. The Ori has engineering three. Edwards, there's Ori. Yeah. There's Bono. 
Well, no, maybe not mono. <laughs> transporters, but actually, you are doing quantum physics scanning yeah. on transporters, aren't you? True enough. Do we not want, do we not want two in each location? So that, we, so that they're all kind of rolling to see how the actual it's going along. Well, that's up to you. That's three I was... pilots keeping us still and three pilots on the site. No. Three people oh, yeah. on the site. Yeah, yeah, so, no. Two people on the shuttle, two people on the Carpathia, two people on the ship doing the science side. Whilst Caval, random crew member number 56, and Lenny are piloting the three vessels. So that they can be take, we can be then getting the data from all three and also trying to tweak it and observe uh, and change bits between all three. Well, like I noted, this, you know, you're basically just parking these vessels in space, void, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, that's easily done. That's nothing worth an actual um, task. I would consider it an automatic success. Um, the real... Yeah, but I'm talking about the data collection. Yes, the real thing is that's going to require roles is going to be the data collection, so it all comes down to who is going to be uh, taking part in that operation. Sean suggests that Nova will assist, which means that we're going to need somebody to actually lead the venture, so... Well, Vibers was the one that originally... Might as well. Right. 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 Vibers, Edwards, Nova, all right? Mm -hmm. Vibers, Edwards, Nova, all right? All righty. So this is... Let's see how this goes. This is all going to be, um, first it's going to be control and engineering, um, because you're going to be using the controls to actively propel somebody through, uh, you know, this, this thing through the, uh, this, this sample through the transporters, and... We, uh, we're, we're sending the, uh, tomato, uh, the, the tomatoes with mashed potato on. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and a former host's expertise in the relevant skill or field of study. Well, you're going to have to write that up well, for me now. Well, it just so happened <laughs> that during a past time while I was helping out with the whole diplomatic incident that I don't talk about, uh, it, it's amazing what you have to figure out of a head full of blood wine. And dealing so. with trying to figure and figure stuff out when everyone's thinking slightly fuzzy due to inhibitors. <laughs> <laughs> so the Viber symbiote recalls that time when it was so inebriated it still had to try and evacuate a whole crew of people through a transporter. So yeah, you gained the focus. Nice. <laughs> once permission. Well, this counts as the once permission. <laughs> All right, then. So, um, let's see. So one person is going to be in charge of taking people, taking the sample through the transporters. One per, one of the uh, folks on the assisting side is going to be looking to manually compensate for any interference. And somebody on the assistant side is also going to be trying to um, use the data capture. So... I would suggest... Hmm. Nova with tinkering technology experimentation is probably going to be the better place to compensate for any um, interference on the line, whereas Edwards with his um, <clears throat> former training in communications technology probably be the better one for ensuring the data capture, so <clears throat> I would go with uh, Fibers probably giving me control and engineering for the transporter operation. Nova doesn't do things with control, she does things with daring, so we'll go with daring and engineering for uh, compensation and uh, tinkering technology in order to try and get the proper uh, counteraction of the interference, whereas uh, Edwards can draw upon his communications focus. I am going to throw in a point of threat just to up the complication range due to the interference, and uh, as a result might give you faulty data back if you don't compensate enough for it. So, 
with a difficulty of three. Gentlemen, start your dice rolling. That's a good one from Nova, compensating for the interference. Nice. Alejandro. This does give room for an expenditure of an extra momentum or for an extra dice or um, somebody to use determination in order to get a guaranteed success on one dice. Uh, Alex, how are you doing there? Um, just deciding. Um, I'm leading up. No, Pipers was leading. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, I, was, I, was, I hadn't seen him roll the two, so my mind just went, wait a minute, did I miss something? No, I'm pretty sure I'm only meant to roll one. Yes, you're only meant to roll one. With focus, so with, there we go, so with Nova blotting out the interference, Edwards is able to right. set up Do we need a determination from Vibers? That's entirely up to you. Well, that one seems appropriate today. <laughs> Alrighty. And we get... Wow! Well over and above. All right, I bet so I could do this drunk. <laughs> I got a mental image now of Vibers going, well, in order to do this properly, I have to recreate the circumstances in which I originally did it. Mr. Minoko, bring the Saurian brandy. <laughs> Well, since I started this episode, this, uh, scenario, this bit of the scenario with a very big pint of, of nondescript Romulan ale, um, we'll see how it ends. <laughs> we see how the venture ends or how the bottle ends. Either way. Yes. <laughs> Whichever comes first. <laughs> Alright, with that many successes and you were all working in concert, you do successfully manage to pass this biological sample between the three ships using the transporters compensating with electromagnetic interference brilliantly. You collect a very important ream of, reams of data, which of course is now going to be down to the science guys to be able to pull out out of all of this data what the actual um, with that many successes I'll, I'll say that the the data you get will include somewhere in there the resonance the, the quantum resonance for lack of a better terminology um, of your home realm because you're using something from your home realm to, to go through the transporters but also um, by passing the transporter beams between the three ships in the void, you're also going to get a reading on the quantum resonance of this void realm. So now you need to crunch the numbers. Of course, one of the best to do that is going to be Ori with his quantum physics. Who else wants in on the, uh, the science here? Basically, as long as you can justify it, and I believe in it, then uh, I'll be happy to take your lead on this. Hello, Cursed or Jenny. <clears throat> Would we class this as an emergency investigation specialist? <laughs> That's not how broad that term is. I like how it's you keep using it broadly. But... <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's saying it is quite more like emergency investigation. An investigate someone who investigates emergencies and determines <laughs> yeah. the proper um, course of action. That would be someone very familiar with life science readings. I mean, if we stay here, we will eventually them. die. So, I'd say it's an emergency. First determines, thanks to her focus of, uh, of emergency investigation specialist, that this does indeed qualify as an emergency, and in her extra opinion, you really need to leave this plane of existence as fast as possible. There, that's her job done. <laughs> as far as actually doing so, that's not a, an investigator's job. <laughs> Necessarily. 
Why um, are you doing that? What was that, sorry, Mike? You know, why are you using insight? Of course. Okay. Um, uh, insight and science. Yeah. Yeah. Insight's kind of like getting a read on the room to feel where the, the mood okay. is going. But in its own way, this kind of science is as much art as anything else, so. Uh, but if anybody else wants to help out, maybe Cursed, uh, maybe Lieutenant Turin. Anybody who wants to or feels they're justified to. I mean, Mono has also got quantum mechanics and astrological phenomena. Subspace mechanics too, actually. Go in there. All right, so we've got so told. <laughs> we've got Mono and Ori currently, or do we want to actually bring Kirst in on this? Bring her in. Bring her or in. Jenny. Okay. Either one or the other. Can't hurt. Uh, Gene might have something to say if we bring Jenny in, though. So you know, <laughs> gotta be careful. Yes, indeed. So, um, who hasn't rolled in? But Yan, you haven't had a chance to roll yet. Do you want Cursed or Mono? Uh, I'll take Mono. Okay. And... <coughs> who... Webby, you haven't made any rolls yourself yet, have you? Don't think so, no. Nope. No, okay, so... You got Cursed by the looks of it. And Mike can be Ori as per usual. So this is gonna definitely be trying to tease out the data you want. So this suggests to me you reason and science with whatever folk are you think you can justify. Okay, emergency investigation specialist. <laughs> I've already made my uh, thoughts known on that, so... Uh... <laughs> uh, com uh, computers, then. Computers? Uh, Makes um, sense. Subspace... Mechanics or... So you want me to use reason, then? Um... <laughs> the difference is only two, but if 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 you want Ori to go on gut feeling with all of this, then yeah. that's fine with me. Right. If your chief, if the chief of science believes that instinct will get uh, get us through this as much as being able to actively get protocols to uh, read, oh hello, oh and there's another one. Spend a legion of honor. <laughs> There are two mind. complications there. Uh, Actually, no, there's not. There's one. One. Uh, the complications was the, the complication range up to, uh, the transport. Well, the transport. This is just data crunching now. So yes, Legion d'honneur. I could be really mean and say that uh, Mono doesn't have Legion of Honor. The character may do one of the following. Gain two bonus moments when successful or ignore single complication suffered on a task. It doesn't say that they yep. have to be involved uh, in said task. <laughs> Indeed. I'll go with that. I wasn't going to be that mean. I was just pointing it out that I could be that mean if I really, really wanted to. But I'm not going to. <laughs> because I love you and you're all my children. Or something uh, weird and not in... Not in oh, I didn't I think that through I. at all, did I? <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to clean up the glass on the bridge? <laughs> <laughs> Clean up an R5. Yeah, Bibers is just stamping it further and further into the... Uh, <laughs> the he likes the, the crunch carpet. sound it makes. Well, if we're getting petty, oh, then Ori yeah. has got some uh, loose wiring he should be tidying up if he's really that, uh, <laughs> that bored. <laughs> Mono! Clean up those wires! I thought I was data crunching, boss! You can do both. You can crunch data and glass. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we're ignoring that. We got two results in total. Okay. All right. We are reasonably confident we have got your home plane resonance. We're not entirely certain we've got the resonance of this plane, but you have at least got a destination of sorts. So, the next question becomes, what do we do next? Are we going to try do we opening an aperture? For a... Go on, sorry. I'd still prefer to send something larger for a... So you want to try again and get more data? 
Well, who's going to be the volunteer to go through this this time? Alright, well, at the end of the day, we need to send the ship to food, don't we? Yes. So, couldn't we maybe try a shuttle? Do we need to scale this up? Correct. So, jump from a plant to an actual small craft? Or maybe start with like a cargo a cargo box or summit? What do you think? What about a holographic torpedo? <laughs> Just because we haven't had a chance to fire one of those yet. But no, the holographic Mr. torpedo... <laughs> The holographic torpedo might not be a bad idea because it is something that you have been working on and has got a lot of complicated inner workings. Its own isolated power source, a lot of um, individual um, hollow emitters that have to go on tiny, tiny anti-grav impellers, all of which has to be controlled by a, a, a computer inside of the torpedo. So that's a lot of different and complicated uh, to use the word I just used then, gubbins, inside of one thing in order to test <laughs> with the readiness of this uh, thing. Well, we, we have another plan that would work just as well. Yes. Stephen! Not suspense. Steve uh, could you polish that? Uh, there's a mark in the middle of that transporter pad. Clean it. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Set. Stevens, there's an X on the floor. Could you investigate <laughs> it for me, please? Steve Just a little closer. Fibers sure. might regret that. <laughs> mm. I don't... Send the torpedo. Send the torpedo. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's so let's not transport it between the Carpathia and the shuttle, etc. Let's just beam it to space, because if it explodes, <laughs> beam it to space and then beam it back again, kind of job. I don't know whether we want to beam it back. Okay. But this one hasn't got a bomb in it. It's full of holographic uh, uh, yeah, groups that will invade your ship and try and murder everyone. Yeah, good point. So what would you like to do? Yeah, beam it in, beam it back. Beam it in, beam it, beam it out, beam it back, okay. Mm -hmm. Building on earlier successes, this will not be difficulty 3, this will just be difficulty 2. So, probably the same 3 again, Vibers Edwards Novar. Trying to do a job at refining the process. So, uh, Sean, if we could get Nova again to assist, like she did before. Ooh. 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 Okay, yep, Nova cleans up the, uh, the data, or the, the transmission medium, rather. Um, Edwards slips on a button or something. <laughs> it's the... Edwards is helping. <laughs> Whoops. Um, put his feet up on the console and accidentally pressed a button. Uh, Vipers puts it through, so yeah, two successes we need, th uh, th two, three successes needed, th two, there, woo, there. Stop slipping on Claude's button. Alright, so once again, now this comes down to the science crew once again, so if we can have Jan and Webby helping out. Mike with, uh, crunching the data, this time with a larger, more complicated thing going through. <laughs> Good one, cursed. Here comes... <laughs> Mono, again, was busy, too busy tidying up the wire, the loose wiring. It's all down to Ori now. He's going to use reason this time. Okay actually use proper looking at the data and reasoning it out. Yeah. It's 
feelings weren't very helpful last time. Don't know. They did the job. And as a result, yes, you do. Using actual reason this time rather than just going on intuition, uh, yeah, you seem to actually get a better result. <laughs> so you've proven that you can transport something with a more complex makeup there and back again, and you have now got data that suggests the realm's resonance. So you've got the destination and the current uh, point of origin resonances. So now it's a case of creating the travel in between them. So what are you going to do for that? Well, it sounds like the main deflector is going to be used to create a resonance uh, amplifier. Um, it was suggested to me that you were going to basically infer or ex whatever the word <laughs> turn turn the transporter to go outwards and I know, transport that, that the was, entire ship. The, yeah, no, 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 no. That was the that was a potential. We could do that. However, I wouldn't recommend it. The other would be to actually cut through subspace. Okay, so we're going to go with that instead. Kind of a shame. I was looking I'd, forward to the, I'd, the, the I'd, hilarity I'd, of taking the yeah. Heisenberg compensators offline. Yeah, I would like to do that, but my chief, uh, my uh, XO said no. Alrighty. Instead, we are trying to punch a hole in subspace. Okay. You know this is possible. You've seen it done and have done it yourself in different means. So how are you going to do it this time? Utilizing the main deflector, you said, which suggests that you're going to maybe pump out some kind of, uh... Go on, sorry? Are we going for bounce the graviton particle beam off the main deflector dish? That sounds like a plan to me. You're gonna have you to try and, um, create some kind of aperture in subspace, yes. <sighs> that suggests to me... you're gonna be creating basically an unstable wormhole? Almost. Aren't we supposed to detonate the port in the cell or something? <laughs> it all Would you comes still downtime. have a port in the cell? <clears throat> Technically, you've got a starboard one too, but we try not to talk about that one too. Yeah, much. we need that to move. Um, that might not be a bad plan. Detonating the port in the cell. Uh, venting that, well, the fact that we're using the port the cells, the plasma, to uh, power the deflector dishes beam. Effectively routing the port the cell back <coughs> into the main deflector dish. Well, let's not forget, according to what little I understand of the, the, the science of how the, the, the nacelles work, they, they, they're basically big electromagnetic coils that generate this, this ridiculously powerful electromagnetic field that allows you to um, basically warp space and uh, break the laws of physics ever so slightly. The laws of physics? Which is essentially what you're going to be looking to do. You're going to be using that kind of coil mechanism to rip a hole in subspace. Question is, how do you tune it to rip a hole in a certain direction? One way suggests itself. Um, <laughs> it'll involve allowing Nova to do her her antediluvian science on. Uh, <laughs> on the n on the other nacelle this time. <laughs> Nova, I need the way to make the main deflector dish punch a hole in reality. Do you think you can do that intentionally? Uh, yep. Yeah. How much power do you need? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much it. <laughs> what, what can you give? Probably all the power. Let's not forget. Oh, Everything really apart from the power. secondary warp core. We need that for the shield. I'm going to shunt us briefly to um, another map. 
uh, just to give a visual representation of the current state of the ship. <clears throat> just to remind ourselves as to what the state of the Navis actually uh, appears to be at this current moment in time. Shields are down to about... What is that? A quarter, almost? Power is down really low. So, hmm. All the power you can muster, mister. And don't forget we can boost power output with positive thinking. There's that too. <laughs> There's not a lot of that going around. What was that, sorry, Sean? Uh, uh. So there's not a lot of that going around. No, you can do it, Nova. We believe in you. <laughs> I wish my drink. <laughs> um, Lieutenant Sarin will remind folks of something that she reckons, um, which is that the, the, the positive thinking is a key component of all of this, but you still have to go through the motions because your subconscious and unconscious are used to you doing things in a certain way in order to accomplish an effect. It's the belief in the outcome of the effect that requires focus. So you still have to go through the trouble of all the manual stuff that you're doing, which you are doing. You utilizing tasks to get data back, which then gives you something to attune your technology to in order to, to come, come out with a result. The key part, of course, will be then actualizing that those material efforts to uh, use everybody's focus to achieve the desired outcome. If that How many of the Tilikau are still here? As in, how many do we know are still in this realm? Um, there's yes. diff it's, it's very difficult to get an accurate count because the sense, the, 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 the external sensors still have a job making sense of the void. They do detect a number of energy points scattered outside of your bubble, which suggests the Tilikal. And we are talking probably about 200, maybe, but the number fluctuates wildly. It's very difficult to tell for certain. Board, because I've got an interesting Theory, or I can prove it for me. Uh, um, I, I'm going to veto bringing them on board, Commander. Because this comes down I to have... you don't want to show them a way out. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. I'll hear the suggestion. But at this point in time, their own energy source over there. By moving them into our energy source. The amount of energy in here has increased. They were also able to pick somebody out. Merging the bubbles together. Hang to on to that idea, Sean. Yeah. Right, what was that, Sean? Sorry? They were able to kick somebody out, so they know how to get somebody out of here. Mm -hmm. Sharing me doesn't matter. So they're able to kick other people out, they just can't themselves leave because they can't unite with their physical bodies. I think they're being punished. Interesting thought. They didn't want us to take them with them. They're wanting us to leave and then open the door. Right. Not strictly true, because one of them did offer to come along. One, not two hundred. Not two hundred, correct. This does appear, at least Turin will again mention, that um, it's more down to the fact that you know, the, the, the process by which they separate their minds from their physical bodies appears to be our process that they still have to go to in order to regain their material form, so that's why they need Tilikal technology to facilitate that, and why they need you on in your home realm to do that for them. I know 
want to do that, we've got to get back you to get you back to the home realm. So, back to the question at hand. What method do you want to use to punch a hole on reality? And uh, what do you want to use as the method of trying to essentially put a hole into the right place? Claws and claws. <laughs> I have claw. Yeah, claw. He can't admit he's only got one button. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone believe that Clort will hit the quantum torpedo at the right price. No, Clort just does the opposite of what she did. Ashtamalu pulled us out. Clort just pulls his, pulls his back, yeah, pulls us in. So she pulled us in. Clort just grabs hold of our reality and pulls the Navis through. Because <laughs> I believe in Clort. <laughs> hmm. I am close. <laughs> Turin might actually quietly put some reservations as to this mode of thinking in case they end in case you end up investing one individual with far too much power. <laughs> oh, this is how cults start, but fair enough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I am Claude. So um have I. Once again, do you have any any ideas as to how you want to do it, or do you just want to put it down to um, task rolls to see how successful you are to come about with the uh, the, the end result? Don't any grand nova puns for breaking reality with a deflected dish. <laughs> it's mostly just firing through things that shouldn't be going through it to see what happens. <laughs> Rip a hole, peek through, see if it's the place you want. If not, quickly peek back and try again. <laughs> we can modify and go, ah. What was that, Mike? Can we modify the deflector disc to have a now focus? That seems to be the general idea that I'm getting, unless I'm missing, misinterpreting what folks are saying. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm late to the party. No, that's pretty much what I was suggesting. And okay, no, we are on the same page. Doing that's anything fine. you can to do help with figuring that out might work. Um, what Vibers is probably going to be doing during this is running to engineering and going through all the motions of doing a warp core reboot because everyone knows that gives us more power. <laughs> right. And it's only me who reads all the manuals. You could just uh, unregulate because there are designed the oh, yeah. reactive chamber is throttled at about 70%. I am going to dump every single bit of power we have into the deflectors, the shield, and the impulse engines because the warp engines will be empty. So everyone has to hold their breath for the entire duration of this endeavor. Gotcha. You can at least put life support onto emergency backup battery. We've got at least a few hours left in the uh, life support. It'll be fine. <laughs> Just don't breathe too hard. <laughs> I've got a fast metabolism. Well. <laughs> It'll get better. <laughs> <laughs> It'll go really quickly and then stop something. <laughs> All right. It's okay. I'm not on the bridge. Okay. The rest of you are sharing the same air. Holding on one second. Post this, uh, thing. Cool, cool. Let's have a look what you're doing. The focal array of the Defiance Navigational Deflector is used to generate a subspace tensor matrix in an attempt to create a stable artificial wormhole. I mean, historically, they have used it. They've used it for tons of different things. And, um, you know, that seems to be the general gist of where we seem to be going with this. So let's check. Let's check memory alpha so I can check the star date of that. Rejoined. Deep Space Nine rejoined. Has that already happened and therefore somebody is aware of it? Ah, if it's that episode, then in all likelihood, 
it has already happened. So if, it would be documented. Yeah, exactly. And we could access the computer records. You mean and you don't read uh, Chief O'Brien's blog? <laughs> So yeah, that happened in 2372, you are currently in 2373, so that's totally a historical thing that has happened. So by doing research, we can grant, you know, get the available data from that incident, yeah. and hopefully yeah. use it in our... Uh, Generate um, a subspace tensor matrix. Subspace tensor matrix. Were there any particulars on that, or was it just space magic? Uh, well, let's see. With a magneton pulse. To the focal array. Well, the focal array could just as easily be changed to be the main deflector array. Drone. Artificial wormhole project. Okay, so you've got historical precedent, which is what you need, because you then know whether or not it's worked before, or at least was possible right. before. You've got a now a, you've got the data successfully to know your destination and your starting point. Now it's just a case of creating this subspace tensor matrix with a magneton pulse, so... And we need a probe. <laughs> well, you got plenty of those. Yeah. But what would you want to do with the probe that you, uh, regards to the uh, d d uh, data that you haven't already got? Well, in the historical records, it indicates they used a probe to, um, to uh, Target drone probe, and then the focal ray it generates a subspace matrix. The drone would then send out a magneton pulse to interact with the matrix, which opens up the space-time continuum. Let's so get the probe to do it. Well, no. it says target drone. What's the difference? Target. I, I'd probably recommend them rather than doing what they did. We actually just do it directly from the deflector. Okay. So the deflector pushes it out because. Potentially, we can leave something here. Right. I would certainly suggest that um, you definitely want to go bigger than what the Defiant did, because the Navis right. is so much bigger itself. Right. So, um, you know, very much go big or go home. So, utilizing past knowledge of what has been made possible before. You can still utilize the main deflector to achieve the same result. You just need to go about now reconfiguring things so that they can do what you want them to do in order to achieve this effect. So unless anyone's got anything final they want to add to this, I think you're looking like you're good to start. Not hearing anything that suggests a counter-argument, so I'm gonna go with yes. Engine room standing by. Okay. So, how shall we do this? This sounds like a linear set of gated tasks. One task uh, success depending on the t success of the task before it. So, the first thing we're going to need to do is probably retune the deflector array to go to the place we want it to, so I suggest someone with engineering expertise and maybe some knowledge of how a deflector works need to now go to the main deflector array and retune it. <clears throat> uh, so anybody with anything to do with deflectors or subspace and indeed anybody who likes tinkering with technology to make them do things they didn't do before. Not that Nova. I'm naming any names here. <laughs> Nova. Edwards. Nothing about deflectors, but that's never stopped you before. Oh, exactly. <laughs> 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 
What about Hello? Hello is all about Tilikal technology, quantum computing, power management, operations. Yeah, so... Things specific enough to deflect us all were, um, subspace. Um, I might need Hello. Yeah. In what capacity? Uh, when we're doing the, oh god, oh god, how much power can we throw into this? In one You're going to need hello for that, yeah, that's a fair, excuse me, fair point, actually. Um, Steven, this has got a little more power. That'll help as that's well. My yep. free for, that's my free for, let's not explode the ship plan. Okay, so if we put some to one side for power generation, some to one side for doing the task with actually reconfiguring the deflector, so, I mean, Nova's pretty good at that kind of thing, but do we want to give Nova any help? Uh, I mean, well, Lieutenant Bonneau has got subspace mechanics, so he wouldn't potentially be a bad choice. Let's do that. Do it. Okay. So, so far, we've got... Hold on a second. He's a good guy. First lot is deflector. What should we call it? Retuning. Then we keep getting more. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. She can give him the really rubbish jobs, including the actual rubbish. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in, I think I need all five dice. <laughs> yeah. Group 2 was power generation. Um, after the deflector has been retuned and power has been done, uh, what are we going to want afterwards? Someone's going to need to actively run the effort to create the subspace breach, I suppose. <laughs> and that's going to be a manifold kind of extended task, I think, because that's going to be multiple people doing their job and those who aren't actively doing a job are going to have to try and help everybody else focus on the out positive outcome. So I see an extended task in our future. Mm. <laughs> so who's getting the so who's getting the ship to start singing anthems? If you guys start doing the Russian national anthem, I'm going to be very surprised. The Cochrane Medal of Excellence for tinkering and testing a theory. Whoa. Nova, go big or go home. Once permission, when you spend a point of determination, you receive two benefits of, and when you attempt a task using science engineering, you roll an additional d20. So then, um... <laughs> yeah, this is basically going to be Milano going, oh, wow, okay, so you did need my help. But we'll put Mono on anyway, because he was assigned, but let's see how successful he is. Um, who was Mono last time? Is it Webby, or was well, it was Yan? Yan, do you want to be Mono Yan. again, or are you holding on for the extended uh, task? No, Come on, Mono again? Okay, thank you. Mono, but, uh, I'll do it. This will be deflector retuning, so it's going to be a case of control and engineering, but with a focus on uh, subspace mechanics. And he's only running wrong one dice because he's assisting Nova. Nova, who is going Nova on this? I have a very strong feeling that it's going to be daring and engineering that Nova's going to be using on the deflector. There it is. Alrighty. So, Mono uh, has contributed no successes. Just effort. I'm a sucker smarter. <laughs> I haven't had one success. Might as well throw it. Wow! <laughs> Throwing everything at this. I like it. Alright, so. Whoa! 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 Do you have one left? Or have you used them all? Have you still got a Legion of Honor? <laughs> No, we shouldn't go. Okay. What? <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. Let me think. Four successes, but one complication. 
Okay, so you definitely, definitely retune the main deflector. You have tuned it to the best of your ability. Mono is like, whoa, what did she, what did she, how did she, what are you doing? As Mono is just watching um, Nova flick around isolinear chips from their various positions, and then she kind of goes, mm, nah, maybe this way, and flicks a few others over, but it does get the job done. And as such, you believe you have tuned the deflector to the correct destination frequency that you want it to open an aperture into. So the next job is going to be generating enough power for the system to be able to throw everything it's got into creating this aperture in space. Now, thanks to uh, Mike remembering that episode, and therefore Ori bringing up the historical data, you have an idea as to how much you are going to need, but uh, as a result of that complication that we just rolled, I am going to throw in that the complication range for this power generation thing goes up by a further two, because I threw a threat in there as well. So, for the power generation lot, uh, this is going to be daring and engineering with all requisite related power uh, related roles. Vibers is using Starcross and procedural compliance. Nice, we're putting out all the stops. Uh, this will be difficult, <laughs> and that. So this will be difficulty two, but the, like I said, the complication range is up by two as well. So it's going to be an 18, 19, or 20 that causes a complication. So if I can get, um, Sean, unit hello is usually your baby, unless you want to let somebody else roll. Uh, someone else can roll if they're not adding go. Okay, um, Gareth... Bertram hasn't done anything as of yet, so maybe Bertram can be... Yep. Uh, sorry, not Bertram. Gareth can be hello. Why would Bertram be hello? Yep. That offers up a whole new <laughs> level of... Whoa. <laughs> Technology. Oh, dear. I am, more yes, I am Bertram. <laughs> <laughs> and why have I got moss pumped into my warp core? And why is it working? <laughs> the mo warp core is moss. Um... Ooh, do, 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 do. Um, Webby, you're being Stevens, I take it? Yeah, can do, yeah. Of course, and Vibus is being himself, so yes. We dare to create some like power! Assistance. I'd like assistance from the ship's computers. Okay, um, Mike, well, if you could be the ship then, please. <laughs> what? If we can have you be the Navis, what's the Navis going to contribute to this? We are trying to generate power, so this is going to be drawing on the Navis's structure and engineering, please, to see if you can pull out from the reserves. Overclock the engine, as it were. Uh, let's see. Do you know where to find the Navis? Yeah, got it. Excellent. Space. One dice from the Navis will take the eight. Oh, okay, sorry. That's okay. What do you want, um, hello to roll? Uh, no. daring and engineering, but can use power management as a focus. Okay. Just the one die? Just the one die. Still Ooh, there we go. You did hello. Knows exactly what it's doing. Unit Nova, Even? this unit requires you to distract Unit Clort while I activate Unit Clort's button. <laughs> Siphon all power from Clort's button. Wait, you wanna play, you wanna play with Clort's button? A little more power, so whenever you succeed an engineering task aboard your own ship, you may spend a momentum to regain a spent power. Very nice. And we do succeed very, very well. Good grief. So that's extra power the Navis has gained. Whoosh. Whoosh. And it's now down to two more successes. Blimey. So you now, have... Does the third... Yeah, 13 Go. counts. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So all of you working together have managed to basically do what... Um, I believe I caught wind of somebody saying that uh, as a rule, as a safety measure, the warp 
core usually operates only at 70% capacity as a rule. Yeah, and we usually have two of them and one's in a spare. You've got secondary reactors, not a secondary warp core. So, um... I could dream. <laughs> yeah. And I will keep dream. being a pedant <laughs> on this for as long as you keep dreaming, so it's fine. <laughs> we'll counteract each other. Matt and anti-Matt will meet. <laughs> Am I suggesting that Davis is now the anti-Matt? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Moving away from that before I get drawn too much down that particular mental rabbit hole, you have succeeded in basically throwing the thing into overclock, and uh, this is what she can do at a hundred percent, kachonk. And yeah, you gain a good degree of power. You have a feeling you're going to need it. So your power is now generated at almost fifty percent of what it can usually uh, reliably. Uh, store so the Navis's Rich. power points are up to mm, more like two. Red, you've got everything. Red, you've got everything we can get. Yeah, just don't ask for anything else. We're holding it together with duct tape. So, though she's holding perfectly fine. I need to now create an extended task. Escaping. The void. So this will be something that everybody will get to contribute to in one means or another because this does represent that everybody has to work together even if they're not actively involved in either piloting the ship or generating power through the main deflector, keeping the deflector functioning. It's also everybody else focusing on the required result. So I am going to go with there are oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I believe each of you are capable of generating that many work, bits of work, so I am going to go with having to use a calculator. It's gotten that bad, folks. A calculator has come out. Daisy. Is the calculator too much for my poor computer? Go on, you can do this. There we go. Just a couple of respond. Right, that's what we reckon. I am gonna go with work track of that much. Now you are fighting against the fact that you have got neural inhibitors on. So you have to seriously focus through those. So the difficulty is going to start all the way up at four. Magnitude of this is also going to be four, and there will be three resistance initially. Okay. So, first things first. Well, basically, who wants to take the first task and what's it going to be? Now, I'm going to say that primary characters are going to be the ones doing the work here. Uh, the secondary characters are going to as be assumed to be working in concert with the primary characters to achieve this, but because your primary characters are the heroes of this show, it's their, um, their efforts that matter the most. So, as such, who is going to start us off? Are we going to begin with the captain, or are we maybe going to end with the captain? Uh, begin, because I can then spend my determination bonus to guarantee someone else. Alrighty. <clears throat> then, basically, dictate what uh, and action Andrews is going to, to, to use to contribute to this entire endeavour. Basically, we'll be taking command of the situation, running through the checklist that we've put together, uh, okay. timing that we execute all activities in the, in the manner required. So coordinating the crew using your command abilities. <laughs> so, um, you've got a full momentum pool, you've still got one determination left, either you can save that no, or... No, I've, I've got two, I've just taken down to one. Oh, okay. I'm burning, I'm burning one of my determination to roll a one on my die. Weaning one, alright then, so... Roll what you want to roll. Difficulty is four initially. I can't actually make it a zero on the die, but I'm just rolling the one die. No, 
not you. I don't know what my car is. So, there you go. Two so. three successes, which mm, you may, might want to have wanted to have actually rolled two dice there. Are we doing it as two dice for everyone then? Two dice for everyone, yeah. Okay, alright. So you may as well roll another dice. Especially with the difficulty being. Whoa! Mama! Okay! Five successes in total, two ones. Wow. I now. Once, yeah, wow. So Andrews goes into full captain mode there and starts uh, rattling off the checklist, as was noted, of all everyone who needs to act in which manner. Everybody else, secure your stations and focus on the outcome that we want, which is getting home. So the ship is as ready as she's going to be, and with that checklist, we go into overdrive. So can I now get? Uh, Webby, can I get you to roll me seven challenge dice, please? Give me a sec. Uh, that'll apply to when Edwards does his stuff. Oh, okay. So, hold on to everything. that for your own endeavor. But, yes, do remind me that it's there. <laughs> so, uh... Did I say it all channel size? I did, didn't I? Yes. I'm just checking through my medals. Everything okay? Yeah, it's alright. I'm just reading through my medals as well. I'm trying to see if there's anything related. I gotcha. Yeah, I don't think there is. Direct task one I can do. So yeah, before Okay. Shepard. Okay, nice. Ooh, look at that! Nine! Good lordy. Now three of those are gonna come off thanks to the resistance, which leaves you with six and two effects, which means a breakthrough has been made and therefore the subsequent difficulty goes down. Very nice. Who is next? I would suggest that the next thing that needs to happen is that the main deflector gets activated, so it's either going to be an engineering jobby or it's going to be the deflector jobby, so I'm going to suggest either Edwards or Vipers do the uh, engineering thing or Nova does the deflector thing, so whoever wants to do it first. I think that was a BRB from... Oh, you got back. Probably so, makes more sense to generate the power first. Yeah, okay. okay. We'll go with that. Cool. What do you want? So that's going to be... Um, well, siphoning power is usually a daring and engineering type job. You're oh, now at okay. difficulty three. But I do believe Vibers has things that can assist in uh, extended tasks. Well, I still have the manual from before, does that help? Yep. Cool. Incidentally, with that um, value of Vibers, guess what the title of this episode is? What's the that? Breakfast <laughs> at the end of the universe? Six successes! Count. Dang, Tootin! I I'm not need... doing my reroll. Impossible breakfast. <laughs> Uh, right, so can I get Vibers to roll seven challenge dice, please? And if I recall, you ignore two points of resistance for every effect rolled? Um, yeah, I could also... Um, mm -mm. could I pull that one on it? Wow. A bit late. Making and documenting blah, 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 blah. a single focus that possesses relatives at once permission when you succeed at a point of determination. Um, well, you've already no, gone past the point of determination. Using determination, you're now on rolling challenge dice for an extended task yeah. to see how there much you work you manage. So, three effects, seven successes. You ignore the resistance, therefore get the full seven, which means you achieve a further breakthrough of generating enough power to 
channel it into the main deflector. So this sounds like it's Nova's job now to activate the deflector and make sure it don't go explode. Okay. So this will be whatever uh, you reckon Sean would apply to... Um, you could either use control, but I know you like to use daring instead, so... Fortune favours the bold, as they say. Oh, blimey! These rolls are... these ones are coming out thick and fast! Wow! Well over what you need. Okay, so... You used engineering, which means can I get you to roll seven challenge dice, please? Uh, I don't think you've got anything that usually jumps in on extended tasks, so... But that was... Whoop, what effect? Some success. Oh, okay. The main deflector turns on and the, a coherent beam lances out and something is indeed forming at the other end. Now, might I recommend that whoever goes next and whatever they do next is all to do with achieving the, uh, the, the end result that you want, and that the last one, the last one to act should probably be Fazanan to guide the ship successfully through the aperture. So it now lands on Ori and Edwards and Bertram to do whatever they think they need to do in order to ensure the ship's successful translation through this aperture and the successful creation of the aperture. Maintenance of the aperture too. So, um, let's see... Or, what, Mike? What does Ori think he can contribute to this in order to achieve the result we want? Well, Whoop. he's really good with that. He has computer expertise, also as a talent. And computer as a focus, so I don't know if that would help at all. Run uh, numbers in order to make sure that things are kept on track. Yeah. I can go with that. Okay. What's important is that um, Ori believes his efforts will contribute in successfully getting the result we want. That's what we're truly after here. So, roll whatever you think um, Ori needs to roll in order to achieve. He's using that so you can add a bonus d20 to your pool to achieve success. Nicey nice. And it is all you, so you do get to roll. There we go. Ooh, it's almost another one there. But that was three successes, one over and above what you needed. So you use science, because well, why wouldn't you? So I now need you to roll me ch seven challenge dice as well. Uh, do you know how to do that? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> it's been a while. That's oh, fine, that's fine. Uh, if okay, you, yeah, the perform, the perform challenge button, it'll ask you how many dice. You want seven. Ooh, lots of effects there. Um, so... Okay. So Ori is running the numbers. Any updates trying to compensate for uh, for, for you know drift for um, f electromagnetic interference, trying to make sure that the beam remains cohesive enough for you to create a stable enough aperture to get the ship through. Ori believes he has done that. It's now down to whether or not everybody else can do their job to help make sure that the uh, the right result is gotten. So, uh, Edwards or Bertram next? What do they want to do? I mean, an obvious oh. one for Edwards would at least be trying to keep the power feed stable, maybe? Or something else, if, uh, if you can think of it, Alex. Not really, to be honest, unless someone else can advise. If nothing springs to mind, then I would suggest he maybe go through the regular motions, which he is confident he knows what the outcome is going to be. So, maybe just a control and engineering task. Where uh, is my token to click on? What was that, sorry? Where is my token to click on? 
Um, you're next to Stevens. I can't see it. I see you. Oh, there we are. I've hopped up next to um. No, I was. Ah, I'm swapping around. That was weird. I was swap. I've been swapped for no for a second there. Interesting. <laughs> that was weird. Your like potato was fluctuating. <laughs> I clicked on the space. Yeah. Then it suddenly popped down here, and now it's back up there. Like, weird. Weird. Yeah, okay. Anything that Edwards feels will contribute to the success of the whole. I mean, this is experimental technology if you really want to go that way. I was going to say, we are throwing into experimental. Very um, much. Let's see. You do have Nick of Time as well, so that will contribute some. Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to throw in Seeing is Believing, given the uh, phenomenalness of this whole situation. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> That's a lie. I'm, I'm sorry. Wrong. Yes. But yeah, given the uh, not for words, what's the word? How unbelievable the general situation is. Or where are we? No, and also belief is a good part of it. Mm -hmm. or would that not be enough for an argument for it? No, no, I'm I'm sold. Okay. And. I'll never have a momentum just in case. Okay. Then let fly. Ooh, hello. <laughs> uh, do you have anything to counteract that complication with? Give me a second. Giving you a second. There's that. You can spend a determination to reroll the twenty if you don't have it. <laughs> Excuse me. Get to focus characters possesses. Okay, yeah, Starcross isn't do. I've got Cochrane's excellence of Starcraft book. Which is not gonna do but, it. Yeah. There you go. He's got uh, his own he's got two determination left, so you know. Alright, fine. Okay. Uh roll okay, a challenge yeah, dice then maybe to see if you get it back. You don't, okay. Uh, so you can reroll re that roll. one dice. Reroll the twenty and see how you do. Oh, that worried me there for a second. No, nope, you get an extra uh, on top of. Okay, what was it? You were using science, so you roll six challenge dice for me, please. Untap potential was to quickly roll to get back a momentum. Okay. Uh, it's a Nothing. All challenge dice, character receives bonus moon, equal to the roll of the challenge dice and adds one point of threat if it's an effect. So that'd be It was easy. neither an effect nor a result. Ah, um, so, so, nothing. Nothing. Okay. And that is how many zero. Uh, six challenge dice from you, please. Form challenge six. Please. And effects give me an extra if I remember correctly from the time. Did you do? So for when if you succeed, you score one additional work. Alright. So you gave me four successes minus three one success, but you gained two back for that, which means what? Nice. Oh hey. Bertram. <clears throat> the only thing I can think of, because I don't have, I can't really do a huge amount for the, the direct, um, directly working on the project, mm. because as the medical officer, and basically pretty much for the entire thing, what I've been running around doing is trying to treat people both for physical and mental related issues caused by the environment is basically focused on keeping everybody basically focused on the result we're trying to achieve so yep. like through treatments and talking to them sort of counselor style almost trying to actually 
kind of like um, every different part of the body is performing different tanks, uh, tasks, but all comes together for the singular purpose of keeping the body going, trying to get the crew to act like that, if that makes sense, while that does. treating them. So what would you like to... So basically, roll what you think is appropriate to um, his efforts in that I'm, regard. Yeah. I'm going a little bit with my trait outside the box, so I think um, right. uh, I imagine presence and command, even though they're very low. But then again, I'm a doctor, not a professional speaker. <laughs> so once per scene, you may uh, a point of determination may be spent to substitute your medicine score in place of your discipline. Nice, very yeah. good, very good. Yeah. All right, and, then. Uh, and I'm really, really focused on both myself and the entire crew thinking of the long term. All right. Give it a roll. Difficulty still two. Okay. Uh, I've thrown in my leader. And you had that, that quick and ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His, but his finger was on the button for that one. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking this, it goes... Oh, worst case scenario, I haven't used the Legion of Honor yet. It goes to complication. Oh, I'm clicking the hell out of that. Three success is definitely what you needed, and because you substituted uh, medicine for command, you get to roll seven challenge dice. Seven. Ooh. It was. Four successes, three effects. I and mean, he's the only one. So, yes. Bertram has been doing his best, going around, checking up people, checking the neural inhibitors, seeing to those who are being taken back to, and uh, to back to work, convincing everybody they need to focus on what is going on, whilst he himself focuses on what is going on. So finally we get the aperture is created in space. In space. And as such. Oh, it's here. It's got a space! <laughs> oh, space. Space. Got okay, space. So, the aperture has gone as wide as it's going to, thanks to the efforts of everybody. All that's left now is for Caval Fazanan to successfully guide the ship through the aperture. The ship has taken a hell of a beating, but. Does everyone believe that Thazanan can get the ship through to the other side and that what's on the other side is the destination they desire? We shall find out. Jan? I you're up. I can only do this with a barrel roll. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you believe it can be done? Then that's how it's going to be done. It's Thazanan. Um, He's probably only not wearing the blindfold because it'll make everyone else worry. <laughs> Um, I guess I should do a daring con. All right. Well, patrol is better, but I, I feel this is a bit of a daring situation. If that's what you feel, then that's what we'll go with. I shall use a determination as well, as well as one point of momentum. Oh, he's putting it all in, folks. Go, go big or go home. Or in our case, go big and go home. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Star cross, doubling your discipline score, okay. Oof. Crossing. Just as well. Good Oof. lord, right. that's a lot. <laughs> Alright. The, uh, um, the eight, sorry, the eight is two successes as well. <laughs> So the ship starts to rumble as it gets closer and closer to the aperture. Um, Nova and Vibers and Edwards and everyone else on Endearing are keeping the power going and keeping the deflector dish focused. So it's up to Caval to guide the ship through and to get you to the destination you want. He looks like he's doing a barrel roll whilst doing it because he has to do it with style. So now we do the final determination as to whether or not we succeed. Seven challenge dice, please. Oh, 
No! <laughs> Do you want to spend a point of determination to re-roll those dice? Uh, most assuredly. That was a whole lot of nothings. <laughs> I mean, you can keep the two, so you can just re-roll five, right? and it's going to keep the two uh, effects if you wish, or you can re-roll the whole job lot. Yay! That was better, so... All right, going through is not easy. The ship starts to rumble, certain consoles start to spark once again as, uh, as the ship is going through the aperture. You're having to deal with... Uh, the superstructure has already been damaged somewhat by everything that's been going on, so... Core Clort is hammering the button like crazy. Um, what were... F uh, seems to be formerly secured steam vents and whatnot, uh, or, or uh, whatever in the... Uh, in the bridge systems start to rupture again, sparks start to fly, the ship is rumbling, the superstructure is vibrating, but you do punch through the other side where do you find yourselves wishing I still have power Oh, that's a spike. We, forgot all, we forgot to all concentrate on um, Captain Blackford getting the personality. Damn. <laughs> right, let's go back in and try again. I'm sorry, but that only works when we're in there for something in there. I don't think it'll follow us out. You don't think, but science, science demands. What, that do we you try really want sure. Blackford to become a real boy? A We'd real feel boy. sorry for him and everything. <laughs> I, I think now, all Starfleet citizens deserve the chance to be real. When you emerge back into... Um, out of the other side of the aperture you created, you do indeed find yourselves back in the Candidate 3 system. But it appears you have not only appeared sometime after you left, but you've also exited from a different point, because at your ship's aft, for lack of a better term, uh, the remains of, well, the Candidate 3 planet and probably some of Orgoon 3 that cra crashed into it. But a quick scan of the area, <laughs> a quick scan of the area shows that even though the, the strange um, gravitational and tetrionic eddies are still present in the system as they were before, they are to a great extent lessened. The, there's no sign of the Romulans, but thankfully there is a sign of the other two ships. Uh, Lieutenant Ori immediately gets uh, a reading on that um, of the two ships, the Venture looks to be in particularly bad shape. And that is when your communications officer uh, gets a notification that a communication is coming in from the Bellerophon. Just give me a minute. Do you want me to get the drinks brought up, Captain? Uh, Mr. Minoko, one round for the bridge. Uh, <laughs> Let it go to the machine. <laughs> what was I using for... I think it was this guy. If you give him much longer, he is going to try and use the prefix code on us. You know that, right? <laughs> Alright, okay, on screen. Um, a mission to answer, Captain? On screen. <laughs> Obviously, you, uh, if you screen, 
and you get the image of Captain Blackford, who isn't looking his usual self-important self. Captain Andrews, I um, I wanted to make this communication first before you uh, got in contact with the venture. It's uh, a relief to see the nav is back. I just thought you should know the uh, the venture and the, their crew are in a bad way. We on the Bellerophon have been attempting to assist with repairs as best we can, but uh, Captain Corbett has lost a lot of good people. I thought you should know that before you contacted him. I'll, uh, Thank you for the dedication, Captain. I'll let you talk to them. At which point Blackford signs off. Anybody who wants to get a read on the venture can do so easily without the requirement of a uh, of a, a skill check. The venture is in a bad way. It's low on power. It seems it's uh, suffered a, a great deal of damage to its EPS power grid. There's structural buckling in a number of places. And even though before you went into the, uh, the Tilakal's prison realm, or whatever you want to call it, uh, there were already fires breaking out on the venture. It seems that there are no more fires on uh, on the ship. They seem to have brought that under control, but the venture is not in good shape. So, bridge to medical bay, bridge to engineering, assemble teams, prepare to beam over to the um, venture. Bob and Tom's open the channel. At which point? Hailing frequencies are opened. Captain Corbett responds. Captain Corbett looks like he's been superficially injured on the side of his uh, head and hasn't had it seen to. The bridge seen, um, well, you know that the venture is a galaxy class, but it's far from being spick and span. It looks like a number of the consoles behind the tactical station did um, did suffer a malfunction and one of them is cracked, the other is completely blackened. Folks are still moving about, um, some of them with burns and tears on their uniforms, but Captain Corbett does indeed respond nonetheless. Captain Andrews, it's a relief to see the Navis and yourselves back. We feared the worst when your ship disappeared into that aperture. Noted, Captain. Full debrief will be done. No, noted, Captain. A full debrief will be done as part of our return back to Starbase. However, Captain Blackford has informed us of your current situation. Mission to send medical teams and engineering teams to assist. It's very kind of you, Captain. We would be more than grateful to receive whatever aid you can give us. It's. We've lost about 17 people. And my number one, Rosek, was one of them. He, uh... We tried to absorb as much of the gravitational energy from that planet as we could. We thought to use the size of the venture to its advantage. We tried siphoning that power through our power grid and projecting it outwards. Try and dissipate it as much as possible. But there was more than we could possibly cope with. It caused a massive breach in our EPS systems. Overloads. Fires broke out in a great many places. Our medical and emergency response teams couldn't respond to everything in time. Rozak was on deck 7 when the breach in that area happened. There were crew members trapped by the fire. What you got to understand is, for a, a Benzite, fire is lethal just from its near proximity. Benzites, if they get near anything that dries out their skin, it can be lethal for them. 
I have to think that Rosek knew he was condemning, him, condemning himself by going to rescue those crew. But he did it anyway. He even carried the most injured out. He, uh... Saved five people at the cost of himself. I, um... Suffered multiple injuries, one nearly, le one very lethal injury to uh, Latude, but you didn't actually um, suffer any fatalities. Yeah, I will relay that information to say that we were lucky. Well, we will welcome your medical and engineering teams, and we will be underway hopefully whenever we can. Good to see you again, Andrews. Pop it out. And so... Yes, the medical teams do assist as much as they can, as do the engineering teams. Thankfully, you have pretty darn good engineering teams on your side and you are able to assist with conducting enough repairs to get the uh, the venture stable but she is going to need some serious time at space dock to effect uh, the repairs she needs so you imagine she is going to be out for probably the better part of a month but the Navis, however, is a hardy gal and requires um, probably a good bit of TLC herself but should be up and running. Maybe within a week or so. Might not be her full self uh, due to the sheer extent of damage you suffered, but uh, you should be at least within working order within the space of a week. It takes a couple of hours for the venture to be um, seaworthy, as it were, again, but eventually your entire fleet damaged as it is, manages to limp its way back to uh, back to Narendra Station. You've successfully made contact with the Tilikal and have escaped the displaced uh, and the uh, imprisonment, their realm of uh, imprisonment. So, unless there's anything else particularly that folks want to uh, bring up, I have a slight note for the Starbase repair personnel. Sure. Please do not touch main deflector. It's not worth the, it's not worth what it does to hurt your head. Here's a bottle of green. <laughs> um, it, you'll need it when you see the spec. <sighs> yes, indeed. There's going to need to be some untangling of wires to discover uh, or some no, reorienting. Leave it alone. <laughs> It's perfectly fine. It works. I'm not touching it. <laughs> Nova can confirm that it does indeed work and that you're not touching it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, that's the basically the episode done. Um, like I said, we... we could have and maybe could have ha ended this uh, in the previous session, but due to technical difficulties, it had to be put back. But nevertheless, kept a Nova contraption. <laughs> what was that, Alex? I say the, the debate probably would have actually consumed what time we had. To be honest, Kieran, was it when you came back we were still talking? So, 
in all in all, it's worked out well. So, you've more or less... I get the impression that because you're not totally... Not all of you are totally trusting of the Tilikal's motives, you're still going to be on the lookout for this kind of stuff, but not necessarily up to immediately, immediately helping them. I'll leave that up to you to decide. That's nothing you need to um, decide on right, right now. But for the immediate uh, time being, you have successfully completed your mission in regards to the uh, Candidate 3 system and have successfully, your, your secondary mission has been completed of uh, escaping the, uh, the Tilikal realm. So, nicely done, folks. Well done. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum, boom. The best I can do now is suggest that um, since usually um, momentum and claim calculations for these, uh, this mission and the previous mission uh, to an extent are going to be calculated off stream, as it were, I'll get round to those on the morrow. So unless anybody has got anything specific they want to say that their characters are going to do in relation to all of this is, is downtime and between the start of the next episode and the end of this one. You can either tell me now or you can tell me over Discord later. I think Andrews will pull Nova into her office and say to her to really consider renouncing her commission. And to consider or reconsider resigning? To reconsider. Okay. I was about to say I heard the other thing. <laughs> yeah, as did I. I wanted to make sure I heard that right. Okay. And uh... um, Vipers and Engineering Bravo will probably be taking Stevens to one side and going, Right, this is what you need to know to be acting chief engineer. <laughs> We're also asking Edwards if he wanted on the same crash course. Yes. This crash course might be involved. Here, you two. Here's a shipyard full of people. <laughs> uh, we will give you pointers <laughs> on the pub. Yeah. Righty ho. Well, if everybody's happy with that. Yeah. Excellent. Then, in that case, we will cut this um, short because we've essentially <clears throat> finished. So, thanks to everybody that uh, stuck around and watched. Again, sorry for the abrupt ending of last time, but as has been pointed out, it's probably just as well that it happened because the debate needed some breathing room. Um, as such, I'm happy to report that even though there was a momentary spike up to the 90% of my CPU whilst we were doing this, this has rumbled along fairly comfortably, so I am pretty certain that whatever happened was a, uh, a random confluence of events that just happened to trigger a, a technology crash on my end. So hopefully, if I take proper precautions, that won't happen again, and we won't have to uh, have an abrupt end to one of our sessions. But that's for me to worry about, and you guys to not worry about, because we will be continuing the streams uh, for now, probably for the uh, immediate future. So. Yeah, I didn't want to give the, the streams up, I have to confess, but in the end, um, I'm glad it didn't come down to it. Whew. I would have felt bad for all of you guys who tune in and you would have missed out. Hooray for the streams. <laughs> but we don't cross the streams, ever. Unless you really, really need to and the plot determines that you need to. But nevertheless... Watch um, your stream. As a result, I do believe that we are scheduled in for... Let me just check that I've got these dates correct. I believe we are scheduled in for... I can't get the thing to move. Next Tuesday, we should be on for the next episode, the follow-up episode, if you guys are okay, are all available for that. Should be. Yeah. Excellente. Usually this would have been the break in between, but because of the technical hitch, I thought we'd just carry straight on to the next thing. Um, so, yeah, we'll go with that. 
cool beans. Thank you everybody who tuned in. If you're watching this on YouTube and you enjoyed it, then uh, do consider giving us a like. Also consider giving us a subscribe so that you can be notified when more of these episodes come in, which they will be now. Oh, he said like and subscribe. I know, it had to happen eventually. <laughs> I will eventually come round to the 21st century, but <laughs> slow. algorithm has him. <laughs> In the meantime, I will thank everybody for watching um, whatever medium you have been doing so. I ask you all to live long and prosper and also to do like the Vulcans do. Not necessarily become first officer to a total douchewad like Captain Blackford, but to, uh, to engage in uh, infinite variety and infinite combinations. Infinite variety? Did I get that right? Internet diversity in infinite combinations. I got it eventually. And to also look after each other, treat each other with respect, and um, yeah, we'll see you all next week. In the meantime, hailing frequencies are closed. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs>